We love intro music like that. Good evening, everybody, and uh, welcome to the uh, sixth annual, we'll call it sixth annual, but this is the sixth ceremonies for the Amateur Hockey Hall of Fame here for the city of St. Louis. I'm Chris Kerber. For those that don't know me, I do the play-by-play -play for the St. Louis Blues on KMOX. I've missed the last couple of these because of scheduling issues, and uh, so I'm, I'm glad to be back with you all this year. I'm going to have an issue with these microphones, I'm just going to tell you right now. I typically don't have an issue with volume, but I just want to show you this. Look at the size of these things. <laughs> this is the first time I've ever seen these size mics on a podium. This is what you get when you cross a podium in Cialis. <laughs> just gets right after you. Just trying to loosen it all up. Listen, you know what? I, I, I've been thinking about this event since John called me up and said, can you get back here and do it again for us? And I said, absolutely. And, you know, when you're in the sports world on a regular basis nowadays, everybody wants to talk about performance-enhancing drugs, steroids, you name it. And then the next step is everybody always asks about, well, should these people be in Hall of Fame? Should this and that? And where I started to go with it, and it relates to tonight, is this. I said... Well, to me, it depends on how you define a Hall of Fame. And you can get that. We'll wait. <laughs> I've been waiting. Like, Look, I haven't been behind a microphone in like four months. I've been waiting to use that joke. The, uh, it depends on how you define a Hall of Fame. For example, for me, when I went to Cooperstown or I go into Toronto and, and, and see the Hockey Hall of Fame, you go to Canton. Yes, you look to see the bus and, and, and the athletes of greatness, but you also look for the story of the sport. So, for example, in baseball, how could you ignore an entire era that has been impacted by performance-enhancing drugs? Okay, in, in sports, how can you ignore an entire era that was impacted by bigotry? And to me, in doing so, you ignore history. If you ignore history, you're going to have problems. Well. The neat thing about this Hall of Fame is, to me, this is almost the purest types of Hall of Fames that you will find. And when you look around the room and you see the pictures of the previous folks that have been inducted into the St. Louis Amateur Hall of Fame, you see faces, and you see different backgrounds, and you see history, and you see different aspects of life. But there's a similarity between all those people that are in those photos and everybody that is being honored tonight sitting up here. You also see dedication, determination, selflessness, and success. But it comes at the purest of levels. Because when you put the word amateur in front of it, it's because you are doing it for the love of the game, and that is the purest level of sport that there is. And, and that is why... When you think of Hall of Fames, an event like this, an amateur Hall of Fame for the city of St. Louis and, and, and the sport of hockey here is extremely special. It has its place. You can already see the people that have been inducted, and we're going to hear the impact more as we go along tonight. We'd like to welcome all of the uh, current Hall of Fame members that are here tonight. If you're here, go ahead and stand up. If you're a current member of the Hall of Fame, go ahead and stand up for us, please. Once again, we congratulate each and every one of you. We also have some other special guests as well. Uh, the, the St. Louis Blues tonight being represented by their Director of Alumni Affairs, Terry Yake is here. Uh, Terry, thank you for coming out and the great job. When you talk to people out during the cocktail hour, the one constant, and, and this is now the fourth Hall of Fame ceremonies I've been fortunate to be a part of for them, the impact of the St. Louis Blues and the current players, and now we call them the alumni, is one of the biggest reasons that we are all sitting here tonight. So, Terry, thank you very much. Mike McKenna, a pro hockey player, is here with us. His grandfather, Bill, was inducted into the St. Louis Amateur Hockey Hall of Fame. Mike, thanks for coming out. Mike just signed a new contract with the um, Columbus Blue Jackets. So he'll be going to camp with the Blue Jackets uh, and then uh, maybe on his way to Springfield, Massachusetts as well, one of my former stomping grounds, and I think he's going to enjoy his time there very as well. And we're also going to have some folks here represented by some of the, uh, the newest incomers to pro hockey in St. Louis, and that's the Chill. Lou Seville is here. He's their vice president of, uh, of marketing and uh, basically the man of all trades and a former co-worker of mine with the St. Louis Blues. So, Lou, glad to see you tonight, and uh, good luck this season with the St. Louis Chill. Best of luck to you all out there. 
One of the greatest aspects of hockey are the stories that we hear. They're the stories that we tell. When you are sitting out there, you've heard them all tonight. When you're sitting at the tables, you're going to hear more. I guarantee you nobody in here has been more fortunate than I have to sit through dinner in the conversation that I just had with Kelly. Uh, it's, it's enlightening, it's fascinating, and it's one of the great things that I love about the world of sports. Myself, I, went, I spent six years in the minor leagues. That's a lot of bus rides. I spent two years in Birmingham, Alabama, four years in Springfield, Massachusetts. Uh, I just traded Facebook posts with our former bus driver in Springfield, as a matter of fact. And, and the stories that you get from them are, and from those times are just, they're priceless. You take them with you forever. We were doing a game in Portland, Maine. We got in probably about 10 o'clock at night. Portland was about a three-hour drive from Springfield. One of the, by the way, if you ever get a chance to go up into that area to Portland, Maine for a hockey game, it's one of my favorite places to have gone. I, I love actually going up there. For, I would rather take the three-hour drive to Portland than the hour-and-a-half drive on the bus to Providence because I, I enjoyed Portland that much. But we get up in there, and I was, I was one of those guys where I didn't like not being helpful, so I helped hang the equipment. So we go to the Holiday Inn up the street. We drop all the players off, and then myself and the trainers – Bus driver, we get back on the bus and we drive down two blocks, three blocks to the arena. Problem is we couldn't get in because Marilyn Manson had a concert going on. So we're bored. This concert is going on and it's taken forever. So I look at our bus driver and said, hey, Dougie, let me drive the bus. He goes, there's no way. I go, come on, let me drive the bus. I've driven my dad's tractor before. I could drive a bus, right? And he says, he's not driving the bus. So I was like a woodpecker on a tin roof. I just kept after him. I said, look, you got to let me drive the bus. He says, fine. He let me drive the bus. I scared the living tar out of our athletic trainer and our equipment manager, but I drove that bus around the block, nearly took out three trash cans, two light standards, and it's the only time I've driven a bus. But the stories you get from the levels of hockey below the National Hockey League, the amateur level, the people, you name it on down, they're priceless. You carry them with you forever. And we're going to tell you some of those stories tonight. Now, the St. Louis Hockey Hall of Fame... They've got a difficult job. Think about this. This is just year number six. Okay, so the St. Louis Blues came to the National Hockey League into the city of St. Louis in 1967, but hockey was around a long time before that. There were people passionate about the game of hockey here in St. Louis a long time before that. So we're just in year six here with the Hall of Fame of trying to honor decades worth of history and decades worth of commitment that it takes to make the game of hockey what it is. And believe me, the success of the St. Louis Blues right now, going into this season, into the 2013 season, the success of the St. Louis Chill right now rests squarely on the shoulders of everybody in this room, the people that will be inducted tonight, the current Hall of Fame members out there, and their passion to grow the game at the grassroots level. They've got a difficult job in making their decisions. They come up with them. It, it, the stories on how some of the inductees found out that they were being put into the Hall of Fame, I think, are, are just as worthy. So without further ado, let's move on to these inductees and introduce you to who will be comprising the class for the 2013 St. Louis Amateur Hockey Hall of Fame. We're going to start with the Spirit Award, and the previous Spirit Award winners, you can see them all right back behind us in the back of the room. It started, uh, and, and the first two that were in were Noel Picard and Bob Plager. I think they were smart in putting those guys in together because Noel stood up here, and then Bob Plager translated what Noel was trying to say. <laughs> oh, you think I'm joking. That was a dead honest truth what happened there. But the first, uh, we start with the Spirit Award winner this year, and the Spirit Award winner is is Mike Page. Now, Mike Page and his history in hockey, and he's got some of his former teammates here with the St. Louis Eagles. By the way, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to tell a quick story about all these uh, inductees up here. You've got the bios in, in your programs. Take the time to read them. They're worth reading for them. We're not going to go through the, you know, the bios for you because we know that all of you, listen, we're, we're hockey folks in here, and I didn't see too many Ram stickers, so I don't think we're dealing, we can read here, right? Okay. And I'm sorry, if you are with the Rams, it's just a, it's a good joke and you'll live. Okay. But let's go back, let's go back to Mike. I, I met a bunch of his... What I like to do is try and find a story. Well, apparently, this guy's so squeaky clean, there weren't many of them. So 
I went and I'm talking to some of his teammates right before uh, we got started here. And it turns out that, like everything else, nobody's completely squeaky queen. And maybe the best of the story is the fact that none of them wanted to tell me or didn't think I could tell any of the stories that they had for Mike. But they've done things. He cared so much about hockey in St. Louis. When they would travel, they traveled to different places like Dubuque, Iowa. But they had to do it one time in a van where the speedometer was broken. So how do you know how fast you're going? This is when you know you're dealing with smart teammates, folks. These are the kind of people you want on your line with you, okay? His teammates were clocking the time in between mile markers and doing the math to figure out how fast they were driving to make sure that they didn't go over to speed limit on a road trip to Dubuque, Iowa. Now, he's originally from South Bend, Indiana. There's a whole bunch of stories, according to his teammates, about some road trips up to Windsor, Ontario. Those I'm not going to tell you now. You can find his teammates to get those. But um, apparently there's a great story about uh, this guy that needed the math uh, help from his teammates to get up there without speeding too much. But while they're playing, uh, getting ready to play a game in South Bend, Indiana, his girlfriend had shown up kind of un unannounced. So here he is in his plaid pants and getting ready, and they had gone out the night before all hung over, and I guess the quote from Mike was, boy, I really thought I feel bad, now I feel bad now. So here tonight, we're going to help make sure that he feels really good, and helping uh, to give the acceptance speech for Mike is going to be Don McDaniel. Don and Mike, congratulations. Congratulations. 